Hi, my name is Taylor and I'm going to talk to you today about clades and cladograms. So a clade is a grouping of organisms to show phylogenetic systematics. The Greek word clad means to branch, so that's where we get the word cladogram, which is just a diagram that branches, like we see here. Um, yeah, a cladogram is used to arrange taxa in this very simple and neat branching system. The best definition that includes all of the parts of a cladogram that I could find comes from the Yale Peabody Museum of Natural History and it describes a cladogram as a way to group life forms in terms of shared and new characteristics that indicate commonality of ancestry. So there are four major criteria for making a cladogram. The first is that there must be a recent estri ancestor that is common for all of the fish. So as we can see here, it's at the bottom of the cladogram. And as we move up to the top, the fish get more um, recent in time. So next is a bit of a um, setback for cladograms is it only looks at one character state. So for instance, we'll use fins. Um, an ancestral fish will only have one dorsal fin usually with no spines. But as we move up the cladogram, we will see that the dorsal fins will become two. It will move posteriorly or anteriorly and or it could get spines and stuff. So as we move up the cladogram, it will become a more derived trait. Next we will see that there are different kinds of traits. So the more ancestral traits are plesiomorphic traits. And that would be things like a single dorsal fin with no spines. Then we will have synapomorphic traits, which are a common trait that is more derived than the plesiomorphic traits. So here we see that this trait here would be shared by fish B and fish C. And then finally we have an apomorphic traits which are specific to a single fish. I put that here, but it could also go on this branch or this branch. And that just shows that this trait is only in this fish or this species. Um, yeah, so we all wanna know how do we make a cladogram? So first you would want to measure the characteristic or the traits. So like I was saying with the fins, you would measure which species has how many fins, where they located, are there spines, stuff like that. Um, then you would give each taxon a code. That is more of a professional and specific um, to the more um, generic world of fisheries. So I did not do that here, but you would say like, this number means there are this many dorsal fins and a lack of spines. So it's just a number system for the cladogram to show you instead of writing these big words everywhere. Um, it keeps it simple and easy to read. So after you code each taxon, you'll then divide the traits into when they appear. So the fish with one dorsal fin, like the chain pickerel here, would become, would show, would come about before a fish with two dorsal fins or a fish with dorsal spines. So after that, you then group the organisms into each spot where they go on the cladogram and just make the simplest branching formation possible. In this cladogram, I used a very, very simple branching formation. As you can see, there's just this main trunk of the ancestral fish and they all have um, synapomorphic traits that eventually will become an apomorphic trait. But this is not the only um, way that you can do branching. It can go off up here too and, and it gets very complex the more species you have and the more um, ancestral or apomorphic traits that you keep adding into the mix. So, with that, you should keep in mind the principle of parsimony, which is just keep the cladogram as simple as possible, making each species um, 
as closely related to one another as possible, like grouping them. So, with that being said, one of the more common uses for cladograms today would be comparing and understanding adaptations through time and evolution. So, that means like if we found a fish like the lungfish, for instance, when did lungs come into the mix? Could we show that that is a more recent adaptation rather than having a bigger opercular opening? So that's how cladograms are used today. It is used to both disprove and validate hypotheses, hypotheses about adaptations through time. But thanks for learning more about cladograms with me.